Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be a little recap of my World Long Drive event in Connecticut from a couple of weeks ago. I've now had some time to digest everything and, you know, give you guys a nice little recap as to how it all went, what I am needing to improve on, and all that good stuff, so stay tuned. Okay, so I'm going to start off by giving you guys a little debrief of what went on, how things were, all that kind of stuff, and then I filmed some vloggy type clips while we were over there, our way down, and all that kind of stuff, so that'll be on the later part of the video, and a little, a couple of clips from the um, live stream on YouTube from the World Long Drive channel. I'll include that at the end of the video. To start off, I did not feel myself during this event. <sighs> I don't know. I felt like I couldn't get my bearings and my warm up was awesome. My training sessions leading into the event were really, really good. So I had a really good like positive mindset around it. I step up on the first tee and I was just not swinging my swing. I felt a little discombobulated. It was hard for me to get my bearings, like I said, and I just wasn't hitting anything like flush square in the face like I needed to. That was a little bit frustrating. I knew I could have done a lot better, which was disappointing. And that's the part that sucks the most for me is that I know that I've done everything that I can to prepare and, you know, I train really well. Um, I put a lot of work into, you know, preparing for the competitions and for it not to pay off the way I had hoped was really disappointing. I missed out on the top eight again by just a little bit. Um, <laughs> That's like the theme right now, the events. It's like the first event, I made top eight, tied for fifth. And then the events from then on, I was missing the top eight by like one spot. So being that close for that many consecutive events is very frustrating. And I don't know like which aspects of my training and numbers that I need to improve on because as lefties, um, they didn't have any left-handed data available for us. So I can't even go back on the live streams and see kind of how my numbers compare against the other girls. So like club head speed, ball speeds, spins, um, I have literally zero to go off of, which is, um, I feel like a bit of a disadvantage because I just don't know how I fare up against the girls. I don't know how I'm competing in competition. I don't know what my numbers are. I don't know if my um, training has paid off. I, I just am kind of a little bit blind in terms of kind of understanding where I am compared to all of the other girls. So that's been a little bit frustrating at the event. They have gotten, like, it was at Chris Cody's event in uh, Portland, Connecticut. They got a lot of rain during the month of June, um, so it was mostly a carry grid. There was lots of rain that weekend as well, like pop-up thunderstorms and things like that, so we knew it would be most likely a carry grid. Moo and I actually went out early on the Tuesday or Wednesday beforehand to just check out the grid. I was hitting some shots and he was out on the grid calculating yardages and then vice versa. So we were able to see kind of where the hot spots were and which parts to avoid. So hot spot was definitely down the right side and I was trying to go for that the whole time. However, during competition, there was a big old crosswind going from uh, right to left. So I was hitting my draws into the crosswind and they just, they were not going very far. Um, and when they were landing, you know, they're landing into the crosswind, right? So, uh, not getting a lot out of those ones, unfortunately. I probably should have gone to some fades, but I'm not even sure that that would help because my club speeds usually tend to be a little bit lower with fade swings than they are with draw. So, yeah, I was kind of just like all over the place. Uh, so that was that. Moo had a really, really awesome event though. I was so freaking pumped for him. Um, so for the men's, it's so competitive and they, the first day they have four groups of 16. 
you need to make your top eight in your group of 16 to move on to the round of 32, which is on day two. And he made it through to the second day in the top 32. He was fifth out of his group of 16, which was awesome. And he just did so good. I think he finally found his groove and I was so happy to see him like excel and break through because he's been like this close every single time. So that was really, really cool to see. I was really happy for him. And so, you know, seeing him do so well kind of just like, you know, made all of my stuff kind of go away because I was just so happy for him. So that was kind of the gist of the event. I had a good speed session yesterday. I was getting my club head speeds back up to 114. I got to 115, so that's going well. And we've been back in the gym a lot. It's just been crazy with the travel. We've had a lot of like personal stuff going on. So maintaining like a very strict regimen, like regimented schedule has been a little bit tricky, but all in all, you know, everything's really good. And we are now, I guess, a two and a half, three weeks out from our next event, which will be in Kingsport, Tennessee, and that will be televised on the Golf Channel, which is super cool. So that's the next one that we're looking forward to. So we are gearing up for that. We're back in the gym. We are speed training, all of that good stuff. So yeah, that was a little debrief of how the event went. Thank you so much to Chris Cody for putting on such an amazing um, event at the venue. He's got a really, really great venue out there. And he's just like one of the nicest guys that you'll ever meet. So huge shout out to Chris Cody's Golf Range. If you guys are ever in the Portland, Connecticut area, definitely go check it out. I will now include some of the vloggy clips that I took on our road trip down as well as um, when we went to see the venue, when we were hitting a little bit, and I'll try and uh, uh, put in a couple of the clips from the World Long Drive live stream on their YouTube channel at the end of uh, the video so you can see kind of how it went. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video. We just stopped in a little town called Hanover and it is so stinking cute here. It's like this beautiful like old little town with cute cafes and restaurants and oh my gosh it's so cute. I love it but it's just a little quick stop so we are going to grab just a quick little Starbucks and then get back on the road because we still have two and a half hours to go so just a quick little starbucks and on the road we go i would love to stop and try like little coffee shops i think that's like one of my favorite hobbies is to discover new coffee shops and try new places i'm a matcha kind of girl so i love trying different matchas from different coffee shops to see how they do it, what kind of quality they have. Um, surprisingly, okay, this is one thing about Starbucks. The difference between Starbucks in Canada and in the US, the matcha at Starbucks in the US is much better than the one in Canada. I don't know why. There's one reason I know for sure is because they use different oat milk. In Starbucks US, they use Oatly, which is really good. Uh, Starbucks Canada uses like Earth's Own or something like that and it takes away all of the matcha flavor so I don't love it but every time I come to the States and if we can't find another coffee shop like a little quaint coffee shop and Starbucks is the option then I know I can still get like a pretty good matcha. Yum. Now this is a grande matcha latte, iced oat milk, and one cup of vanilla. That's how I like to order it at Starbucks. A little dinner pit stop at Chipotle. This is white rice, chicken, double the mild um, sour cream and guac. 
Also, the weather has taken a turn for the worse. It is pouring rain. Okay, so we just got to the facility. This is Chris Cody's driving range and he's got an awesome setup here. T-Box looking amazing. So we are going to hit um, a few balls down the grid just to get a feel for the hot spots and things like that. Not gonna hit too, too many cause they do have to set up today, but just to get a little idea of things, we are going to just hit a few. I'm currently out at the 350 mark on the grid. Moo is just hitting some balls and I was over here um, calculating for him what his yardages were. Uh, grid is looking like it's gonna be a lot of carry this week, especially Saturday because they are expecting um, lots of rain. So I think grid's gonna be mostly carry. They've had a lot of rain here in general for July. So the grid is not very wet, um, not very dry. So we will see how it goes on Saturday. Well, we're gonna do another little practice session tomorrow, I think. And yeah, I think we're gonna call it a night. It's about 8.30, bugs are starting to come out. So um, yeah, it's time to pack it in for the day. I'd rather maybe see the heads up matches, but I really like the senior division where there was four guys on a tee box in professional baseball that are catchers because they really truly are the captains of the team you know you talk about the captain Derek Jeter being a shortstop yeah and you really impressed with Savannah she's putting up some really great numbers this event I got to watch her a little bit on the range and I'm excited to see her to continue to grow in this sport okay so I hope you guys enjoyed that little vloggy clip of how the event was and our little road trip down uh, I quite enjoyed filming that kind of stuff it's just nice to document it and to show you guys a little bit more behind the scenes of kind of how things go and all that kind of thing so without uh dragging it on too long i hope that you guys enjoyed please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already click the bell button to be notified when new videos are uploaded give it a good thumbs up it helps the channel out so so much and i will see you in the next one bye